our next topic uh, in 8521 is going to be kind of uh, thermodynamics. And when you think of thermodynamics, uh, traditionally it'd be defined as relating heat to other forms of energy and how to change it into other forms of energy. And it, it's quite complicated. But for us, we are simply going to look at um, what we can do with air, volumetric efficiency, and then we're going to look at uh, indicated and brake horsepower, indicated torque, mechanical efficiency. So today, or this video, is on the volumetric efficiency. So we're going to start with air fuel ratios. So what we're going to do, and we're going to com is compare air to fuel during the combustion process. So air always goes first. You know how ratios are. You set them up. Uh, fuel. If you're doing a ratio, we're going to do a ratio to one. Okay. So you should have more air than fuel in any engine at any time, <laughs> no matter how rich you're running it. So we're always going to put the air first in the fuel section. You'll see that I sometimes use a slash. Uh, sometimes when I'm using the words, I use the colon. That's fine. Either is fine. Okay. We usually use a mass measurement. Um, traditionally, in North America, we talk pounds. I mean, kilograms, same, same. So we're talking about pounds of air. How many pounds of air do we need to burn one pound of fuel to get that air fuel ratio? Ideally, we talk about the best ratio, and that's 14.7 pounds of air for every pound of fuel, or 14.7 kilograms of air for every kilogram of fuel. It doesn't matter as long as it's a mass unit. and remembering that a ratio that the units will be the same. Under Ooh, that's a bad underline. Okay. So ideally we're burning 14.1 pounds of air. If we run rich, that means we're having more fuel per air and that expresses itself as what looks to be a lower air fuel ratio. So less air per fuel, more fuel per air, uh, same, same. If we run lean, we go above that 14.71 and we get something like 16 to 1 where there's less fuel per air. Now that is for your gasoline engine. Diesels are a completely different kettle of fish. So just to quickly look at some common air fuel ratios. So when you start up and you have that cold engine, you're going to have a very rich air fuel ratio back in the day you would have had your uh, choke on to restrict the air in so that you made a rich air fuel ratio but now we can control it electronically so you might have a startup air fuel ratio of around nine to one once you start to get that engine a little warmer a coolant warmer you're still idling though you might be running 12 to one so you're still running rich the other time you run rich is when you want power so if you're slamming on the gas <laughs> you're going to have a rich air fuel ratio as well when you are towing another rich air fuel ratio. So what you get is more power when you're running rich, but you just have worse emissions, terrible fuel economy. When do you run lean? Here it says 14.7 to one for cruising. Yeah, yeah, I'd say maybe cruising might be a little leaner as well. Uh, when you don't need power, when you're decelerating, you run lean. Um, and if you are going and your engine's up to, uh, to full heat and uh, everything's running well, you run lean, um, you're going to run that engine hotter. So yes, you're burning things more completely and your kind of carbon dioxide emissions are good, but you bring in the possibility of those hot, hot engines creating some nitrous oxide, um, oxide of nitrous uh, NOx emissions, and you might knock if you explode too early. But So it's always a fine balance, like everything in cars it's all just kind of balanced out perfectly by people who know more than i do <laughs> all right so what do we need to do we need to solve these so we're just going to use the same math as i've always taught and actually i'll go back because i didn't teach you last term so i'll make sure you you see my wonderful magic banana method and although this question doesn't require it i'll do it the long way to just start the process of a, a pretty fun way to solve ratios fun air quotes so we're going to take 160 pounds of air and that will be good enough to burn five pounds of fuel. So there's my first one, air to fuel. And I want to know the air fuel ratio. Now I could just divide 160 by five and get it. But if I wanted to solve it completely with the ratios, what I'm doing is I want to know how much air for one pound of fuel. 
Okay, so air always goes on the top, fuel always goes on the bottom. The magic banana is the concept that when you set up a fraction equals a fraction, whatever two numbers are kitty corners, so top to bottom, make the magic banana. And those are my multipliers. Okay, so the math starts like that. And then your leftover number, the number that would have gone with the unknown, the x, is your divider. So every time you solve a ratio, you can solve it this way. x equals, and here, once again, it's a little silly because it's multiplying by 1, 160 times 1 divided by 5. And that should give you 32. So the air fuel ratio in this engine is 32 to 1. Crazy lean. Here's another example where the banana works really nicely. So they've given us an air fuel ratio. So I know, and I always switch to fractions. I burn 14.7, this is the ideal one, pounds of air in order to burn, oh, yes, pounds, sorry. <laughs> Ooh, this one's trying to sh throw us off a bit, okay? So we get a weight, but we also get a gallon. We're gonna keep it as the weight. So air, 14.7, fuel is one pound. And in my situation, they said a gallon weighs six pounds. All right, here's my unknown. Magic banana, where's the spot where I have the two numbers, kitty corner, 14.7 and six. So that's my multiplier, divide by one. Long form math, the unknown is 14.7 times six divided by one. My unknown is 88.2 pounds of air is required to burn six pounds of fuel. Now I can convert that by dividing by six to figure out gallons, but it really isn't, just keep it in the weights. It works better. Unless I'm asking you to do some crazy conversion at the end, just walk away as soon as you can. Here's a few practice questions. Looking at number one, we're given an air fuel ratio. Air over fuel. Air, unknown, over fuel. Same thing as the last two examples. Where do I see the two numbers? Those are the ones that are to multiply. 13.5 times eight divided by one, kind of unnecessary, but just for clarity, and we're gonna get 108 pounds. We need 108 pounds of air to burn eight pounds of gasoline in this engine at a 13.5 to one ratio. Next question. Our air fuel ratio is given. It's 17 to one. How many pounds of fuel were added if the engine consumed consumed 340 pounds of air. Well, this time we know the air and we don't know the fuel. So when I do my magic banana, the two numbers that are kitty corner are these two. That's fine. X is gonna be equal to 340 times one divided by the leftover. And we're gonna get 20 pounds. Last question, we're looking for the air fuel ratio. Once again, you can just divide by the, oh, <laughs> I'm reading the question. I realize I typed it wrong. Let's change that to the word air. Um, you can just divide the 111.6 pounds of air by the 6.2 pounds of fuel, or you can set up the ratio. Air over fuel. And we know that we're going to make the air fuel ratio to one, solving for x. And we're going to get 111.6 times one. The two, sorry, I forgot to do my magic banana. Ah, there it is. And we're going to divide it by 6.2. And that'll give us our unknown, our x. And it's giving us about 18. So we have 18 to one as the air fuel ratio. So now we're going to move on to volumetric efficiency. So we're talking about airflow and we're talking about how much can you get in to your engine versus 
what you think you can get into your engine. So theoretical airflow is something we can calculate and we're about to do that because it's just based on the displacement. You're like, oh, if my displacement is this, I should be able to get so many cubic feet per minute in of air. The actual air flow, flow sorry, so I'll say calculate this, calculate. And the actual air flow is something you put a device on and you measure. So we're just gonna get a value for that because we're gonna assume we went out and measured it. and that takes into effect restriction. So this is a dirty air filter, you know, something wrong with throttle, something wrong with, uh, you have a mouse nest in your intake manifold, something like that. Something that is messing with your airflow is reducing it below what you think you should be able to take in and contain. It has a formula which involves displacement speed in a random number. This is derived from a bunch of other things not worth going into. Um, main thing is your displacement must be in cubic inches. So if you have liters for your displacement or you have cc's, you must change it to cubic inches, inches for this formula. Okay. When you calculate the theoretical airflow, it's going to come out in cubic feet per minute, which we abbreviate with a capital CFM. Engine speed, RPM. Okay, so one of a million formulas about to come at you. So let's see a couple. Looking at what I'll call number one here, the orange square, find the theoretical airflow of a 170 inch cubic inch engine at 3,500 RPM. Okay, so our displacement is 170 and it's in cubic inches, so that is fine. That's the unit I wanted it to be in. Our engine speed, is 3,500. So let's just plug into the formula, the theoretical airflow. How much air should flow into our engine at the speed is 170 times the engine speed divided by this derived number, 3456. And that's going to give us 172.2 and the unit will always be cubic feet per minute, CFM. Looking at number two. Okay, our displacement is 2.5 liters. So you have a formula sheet that gives you all these awesome conversions. Pull it out. If you want to make cubic inches from liters, the math you need to do is multiply by 61.024. And that will give you 152.5 cubic inches. And I got that straight from the 8520 formula sheet or the Google search. All right, so now we're ready for the theoretical airflow formula, our displacement in cubic inches, our engine speed, 4,500 RPM, and the number they gave us to put on the bottom. And you're gonna get 199.2 cubic feet per minute. So now we found the theoretical airflow and we're ready to take that into the volumetric efficiency formula. So here it is, it's reported as a percent. So you do a little dividing. <laughs> the thing we just found, the theoretical airflow always goes on the bottom of the fraction and then you multiply it by a hundred to make a percent. Uh, the airflows are both going to be in cubic feet per minute. I'll give you the actual airflow because that would have been measured and not calculated. And if our engines are going to be naturally aspirated, that actual airflow is never going to be more than 100%. Because it just, you can't be 100% efficient. Now, if we were using forced aspiration, such as turbo or superchargers, yeah, we could shove more in, right? And get above 100%. But the cost comes somewhere else. So let's figure these out. Okay, an engine has a theoretical airflow of 217.4 CFM at 3000 RPM. The actual airflow is 196.3 CFM. There's an engine speed given. I don't need it for this formula. Volumetric efficiency is equal to the actual airflow, sorry, <laughs> I almost made it too efficient, 
divided by the theoretical airflow multiplied by 100%. So the volumetric efficiency for this engine is going to be 90.3 when you do that math. And because we multiplied in that percent, we get a percent out. Let's get a little more complicated for the last two examples. I think so. All right. We have an engine that has a displacement in the right units. We have an RPM. Always a good idea to write down your variables. And we have an actual airflow. At 287.2. So I have the actual. I know for volumetric efficiency, I also need the theoretical. And I know that my theoretical formula is going to come from these two things. So remembering that theoretical airflow is the displacement in cubic engine, inches, I keep saying cubic engines, times the engine speed. And we're going to divide it by that 3456 number. And that gives me 334.4 or sorry, five cubic feet per minute. Volumetric efficiency is the actual, the smaller number, unless you're talking a turbo or supercharger, divided by the theoretical times 100%. And this engine needs some cleaning. It's at 85.9% volumetric efficiency. Looking at number two, we're into a motorcycle, and I see that they've given me the displacement in cubic centimeters, so I need to convert that. So 1049 from my formula sheet or in the interwebs. Conversion factor to cubic inches is this, and I'm going to get 64 cubic inches. Okay, theoretical airflow first. 64, the displacement in cubic inches, times the RPM divided by 3456. And our theoretical airflow is 46.3 CFM. Over to the volumetric efficiency formula. Actual airflow is 43, given to us always. We just calculated theoretical at 46.3. Units would both be CFM, those would cancel, and we're going to multiply by 100%. And when you do that math, 92.9% is the volume in metric efficiency of this engine. All right, so that's as bad as it gets for these questions. I mean, I could take it back to the beginning, make you find a displacement of an engine, but we already know how to do that and then go from there. That's just adding a little more math, but this is it for um, air fuel and volumetric.